What's up everybody and welcome to Rondell's Unpopular Opinion and welcome to the YouTube channel y'all. If this is your first time here, make sure that you not only give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, but more imperatively, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that notification bell hit. Now we're going to get into what has unfolded over the last week, which has been a lot in regard to the Dana Chanel situation and the alleged class action lawsuit. Now in the previous video, I told you guys that Dana's alleged victim victims of being scammed were putting together a class action lawsuit Dana had put out this long-winded dissertation of a statement on her Instagram page and the alleged victims who got their money taken from them have went as far as taking this to the FBI to the FTC to the Attorney General they have went to every alphabet organization you can name to get it out there and the FTC investigation has been initiated now spiritual world reported on this and they actually put it on their Instagram page and said that hundreds of victims have come together to file over 250 pages to the FBI the FTC the district attorney and the attorney general against Dana Chanel for allegedly scamming y'all they are not playing they want they dough, and they don't care about any of the new announcements that have been made by Dana and Donnell now if you're wondering what these announcements are what I'm referring to on their podcast about two weeks ago Dana announced that she and Donnell are expecting and that they are four months okay so that information came out about two weeks ago about a week and a half ago I should say and then recently this past weekend it looks as though Dana and Donnell actually had a gender reveal now here's what really kind of really threw me off because during the podcast which was, which was announced about a week ago or a week and a half ago right before the gender reveal happened Dana has stated that she was four months pregnant and then the following week she was having a gender reveal and usually when you have a gender reveal you're at least five months pregnant right so that was a little bit off to me a little bit confusing the gender reveal i'm not sure if though as though they got you know they panicked or they felt as though because of covid that they weren't going to have you know a big elaborate event but the photos came out which the photos look great the deck the decorations were great the decor was great but we didn't see Donnell's parents in any pictures. We didn't see Dana's dad in any pictures. Donnell, you know, stated that he left social media. So you don't see him posting at all um, on any content or anywhere as far as Instagram, as far as Facebook. He said that, you know, he's living his best life and he's not living on social media. But social media is how he makes his money. Okay. Awkward, right? So we have that. And then her father which he goes by you know uncle magic we know who her dad is he also has dropped off the face of social media and i just don't understand how is this possible when you make most of your your income the meat and potatoes come from social media so her dad is completely gone off of social off of instagram off of social media and donnell is also gone off of social media also only leaving really honestly dana now in the photos back to the photos in the photos you don't really see anybody around you just see them and i don't know whether or not this was like a gender reveal like an actual gender reveal with family there but from the instagram story there was no one there other than the people who decorated for the gender reveal um the photographer and that was pretty much about it you didn't really honestly see any family any friends any parents their excitement about their grandkid nothing nothing is being posted other than what dana is posting now i'm not saying that dana is not expecting or she's not pregnant i just find this to be a little bit weird especially after someone has had two miscarriages they would be overly excited about you know actually having this baby and they would have the support and rally of the family despite what's going on with the class action lawsuit and them not wanting to be on social media they would at least want to be in your pictures so that was a little bit weird to me now we don't only have the class action lawsuit that seems to be taking place in the very 
awkward gender reveal that actually also took place we now have don's former best friend for about 10 years speaking out on his experience with donnell and dana and he pretty much took to his social media went on instagram made this igtv post about don and dana and how basically they stole his idea and went on to scam with it so i'm gonna let you guys listen in and pretty much make your own conclusion about this but take a listen to what he actually had to say friend shouldn't she want to help you because she cares about you why don't everything gotta have a fucking contract with it loyal to them that he would to me so y'all know what i did y'all i called his mama miss alicia hey miss alicia by the way, Miss Alicia, Donnell's mom, that was like my mom at one point. She would come over, clean our house for us, all that stuff, right? So I hit up his mom and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, mom, well now she's Miss Alicia. I don't call her mom anymore because she she clearly disowned me as her like big son. So I said, Miss Alicia, I said, Miss Alicia, you know your son just signed a 360 contract with a girl he only knew for fucking four or five months? His mom called him and cursed his ass out. Like, she didn't want nothing to do with Dana. She thought this, this, this shorty was just a scammer, whatever. Wow. The answer on my phone calls anymore. He was texting me back like every two, three days. They wasn't inviting me down to the office no more. Like their whole vibe changed when I didn't want to give them 50% of my business. So... Then I started noticing them some things. Some of my vendors that I use when I fix credit, I started seeing Uncle Magic's email pop up on the CC emails. So I'm like, yo, this man literally took everything that I ever said or did around him and went and tried to go start his own shit. So I wanted to test them, right? So I asked, I know, I said, yo, bro, since I'm fixing your credit for free, can you, um, can you uh, uh, give me a shout out? Can you give me a shout out? Yeah, bro, I'll give you a shout out. Don't worry about it. Then the next day, he's like, oh, bro, I'm sorry. I can't give you the shout out. Um, I, I'm in contract with another credit repair company, so I can't promote or endorse any other credit repair company besides this one. So I said, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? What are you talking about? So then he was like, Oh, well, I, like we started our own, our own credit repair company, so we don't need you anymore. So I'm just like, wow, you let me fix your credit for free. Then you started your own credit repair company to lie and act like y'all were the ones that did that. And then you took my platform, my brand and everything that made my company what it was. You try to steal it and create your own. And now everybody like. If you go on the Dana scammer page, people are literally following lawsuits every day. They're following FCCs, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's crazy how karma works. And 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 I know if you're watching this right now, listen, I never wanted to see this happen to you, but I try warning you. I told you, stop scamming people. I told you. I said, bro, if you would scam your own brother, then you would stop at nothing. And the fact that you started a tax business when I know for a fact you don't know shit about taxes. The fact that I was the last person. I did your taxes. I did your taxes. You were getting fined. He, you were getting fined for not health, having health insurance. Like you don't know shit about taxes and you started a tax business. It's like, bro, money isn't everything. And because y'all love money so much, that's going to be your downfall. So I had to address that because a lot of people been DMing me and asking me. So that's the story. And I'm not going to talk about it no more. I'm not going to give them no more clout. That's what happened. If you guys, if you guys go and choose to still do business with them and they burn you for your money, don't, don't act like you didn't know. I, I told you, I told you. And I told people two years ago, two years ago. Two years ago, this went viral. Two years ago, when I made a post about this, it was all over Shave Room and Baller Alert and stuff like that. But then after a week, I let it go. After a week, I let it go. Because I'm like, I can't heal from this unless I just walk away from it. But now that we're on the topic of Philly scammers, 
It's like people in Philly just don't do good business. That's why I left. I honestly believe if I meet 10 entrepreneurs in Philly, maybe only two of them do good business. The other eight, I'm good. That's why I had to move. That's why I had to move. I did not like the vibrations or the energies that was in Philly. Because every time I turned around, somebody was doing some nut shit. Every time I turned around. Someone was still hating on me, leaving, leaving fake reviews, and just doing a bunch of weird shit. And you know what's crazy, bro? You know what's crazy, y'all? I tried to collaborate with all the big credit repair companies in Philly. Because you know what I said? I said, yo, we're all helping the same people. We're all trying to help black people. So why not? Let's just do one big ass event where anyone who comes to this event, we just give them all the knowledge from all our perspectives. Every time I try to set up something with the credit repair companies in Philly, they always feel like I have some fucking alternative motive. They always feel like I'm only doing this to spy on them and shit like that. And it's like, number one, I make more money than y'all anyway. Y'all can't, y like, it's, it's, like, y'all don't have anything that I want. See, this you guys got to understand. When you already make money, you don't got to steal nothing from anybody else. I don't got to steal nothing from nobody else because I already get money. So I don't, and then that just puts out bad energy. Now, I have paid for courses and took what I learned and repurpose it for my content, absolutely. Like, uh, like my man Doug. My man Doug, I paid five thousand dollars for his course. I took the gist of it out, and then when I did my real estate course, I included stuff that I learned from him. But guess what? I always give Doug his credit. Doug Depp is one of my favorite mentors, and I will never stop shouting his name out. But guess what? You know what? A lot of other people in Philly do. They'll get all this knowledge from you and don't give you no credit. They'll just try to pass it off like it's theirs. And that's why, see, one thing I noticed about a scammer, a scammer has to keep on scamming because they're creating so much bad karma for themselves. See, when you, when you start scamming, you're creating bad karma. So then you got to keep, keep, keep scamming because money is not coming to you easily anymore. See, money comes to me so easily because I do so much good for people. That's why I don't got to work hard. That's why I don't got to steal from people. So, guys, the moral of the story is don't steal from people because once you put that energy out in the universe, nothing but bad stuff is going to come from that. Nothing but everybody who ever done me dirty in the past is all suffering right now. Everyone who ever done me dirty is suffering right now. Bad. And I'm not suffering. I'm sitting here in my nice 32, 3300 square foot house. With a pool out back in a hot tub with my two luxury foreign cars parked outside living the life while these other motherfuckers are worrying about lawsuits and worrying about people trying to sabotage them and other people got to steal people's content and all that. I don't got to do all that. I don't got to do all that. I remember one day I woke up, I woke up to a $12,000 deposit hit in my account and I'm like, where did this money come from? But guess what? God gives you money See, I heard that you're what not Don's former best friend had to say. He was stating that he did not want to rehash the situation again. However, due to everything that's happening with the class action lawsuit, a lot of individuals have been coming to him asking him to speak on what took place and how him, Don, and Dana actually fell out. So he kind of really gave the logistics of it again via an Instagram live. He said after that live, he will not be speaking about it anymore. He tried to warn Dana and Donnell about what they were doing. Doing, especially Darnell being that that was his friend however it just kind of really didn't work out now it seems as though more accusations keep coming out day by day by day about Dana Darnell their you know her father their business practices and how people are not getting product or services after coughing up hundreds or even thousands of dollars all right and dana was actually caught getting a little bit crazy with one of her current customers in the comment section of her instagram page so one of her customers actually hit her up in the comment section and said dana 
can you give me a call regarding my app i have serious questions and i had no help dealing with your dad sister and melanie thanks so dana responds please email support at alakazamax.com our manager will get back to you in the order your inquiry was received she wrote back and told dana i've done that i haven't gotten support i need the app um i need and the app didn't meet the agreed upon deadline so right here you can see dana pretty much getting upset and said that this is not the proper channel of customer service it is indeed after business hours so you will not be responded to today please send in a customer service inquiry so we can better assist you directly i ask that you respect our uh, business channels our proper business channels as you would fashion nova or instagram you cannot contact the founder and receive answers on an exact on your exact account via a comment on social media we look forward to your inquiry and forward to assisting you in getting the help you need so the customer responded back this is what happens when customers go through proper channels and still do not get what they ask for they reach out to the source i'll file my complaint thanks casey <laughs> and she called about her government so dana had, had enough at that point and said this is what happens when black people don't respect other black businesses as if we are running some side hustle and you can tell us how to run business how you desire there are proper uh, there is a process and procedure and unfortunately i don't can't and will not help you through social media but the team i've put in place can definitely help you and will answer your concern in the order it is received okay here's a problem i have with that number one i don't know where dana has been but fashion nova definitely does respond to their customers through the actual comment section another thing that they do is they ask for you to dm them so they can further look into your inquiry i don't understand how this is considered proper customer service as someone who has been in customer service for 14 years and is a manager how she felt as though this was actually helping her case if i was dana i would have just told the customer to dm me so we can further take a look into what is going on versus going back and forth with the customer through the comment section that to me was pretty much in my opinion unprofessional and it didn't have to go down like that if the customer is telling you that they have reached out to your necessary channels or your proper channels and still haven't gotten business um you're choosing not to help them through social media it's not that you can't you just willfully just won't do it um and in the climate that you're in right now where you're actually having class action lawsuits filed youtube videos being done on you and you know this the best thing for you to do would have just said D dm me so i can take it from there instead of going back and forth with the customer through the comment section with everything going on with these class action lawsuits where you know you're under fire right now i don't think it would be a good look customer service wise to be going back and forth in the comment section like we cannot see it because we definitely can see it and i also don't understand how you're stating that social media is not the proper channels to address customer inquiries when you acquire your customers through social media where you scout your customers and recruit your customers through social media it just does not make sense there's just a way to go about doing things and like i said 14 years within customer service i pretty much would have just told the customer dm me and we can take it from there it didn't have to be drawn out going back and forth black owned businesses didn't have to come into it a lot of people use that as a, a scapegoat to you know justify the foolery and the fuckery that they do but honestly it's time to do right by our people it's time to actually you know render product or service once they give us their their hard-earned money because we are the least progressed and the most economically disadvantaged marginalized group in america and we need to be doing right by each other so like i said in the other two videos if these allegations are proven to be true in the court of law there needs to be accountability from dana there needs to be accountability uh with donnell and it needs to be uh, accountability with dana's dad all right they need to pay up 
point blank and a period but that's all i have for you guys today with this one thank you guys so much for tuning into this video as always like i said i will keep you posted and give you updates on the situation but i love y'all take care and have a good one